his fashion. Fashion is a word coined during human beings' evolution. It changes by the second. It's very, very cruel. Before you can even reflect on it, it's moved on, it's gone, and a new phenomenon has taken its place. Have you discussed the headlines? Preliminarily, here are some samples. We're here to confirm the design with Miss Wen. But it's because fashion is so cruel that it keeps stimulating new ideas and new ways of thinking. It also brings new values and lifestyles to people. Isabel Wan is one of Taiwan's most distinguished fashion designers. How so? From her past and current works, we see things like frayed denim jeans or beaded sweaters. These two items may seem at odds because the beaded sweater shows a delicate classic Chinese style, while the frayed jeans symbolize Western decadence. Isabel has combined our aesthetic traditions and then surpassed it, even liberated it. She stands at the forefront of Taiwan's fashion, ready to challenge herself. I don't think of her as a fashion designer, but rather a lifestyle guru and an artist. Through her creativity, clothing design, and fashion sense, she's led Taiwanese women in an awakening. We are no longer passive. We can be professional too. We have the right to choose. We can be positive and proactive. We can be soft and tender, but we can also be bold women who are leaders. My instinct told me I needed to have a brand of my own, no matter how small. Then I'd make clothes with materials from Dihua Street. I was confident that I could make beautiful clothes with traditional fabric. Isabel's designs also reflect a wonderful conflict. That is, the past and present, the old and new. When you combine the traditional with something ultra-modern, you give life to something new, but it still carries a history. Isabel conveys this subtle message in all her designs. When I talk about fashion, I tend to treat it as a story. I think, sometimes I see it as a film. There has to be a story behind each piece. Each piece has emotions and a rhythm. It's narrated with colors, and it unravels smoothly, just as water flows. So we see all the colors. I have some new colors. For example, there's an orange with a tinge of pink. It's a rarely used color. Then, there's a pretty lime green and an emerald green. Of course, they're my favorites, khaki, ivory, and gray. These are the traditional colors, and I use ivory and khaki for every season. They're my favorite colors. To these, I added the new colors, and they compose a melody just like in music. As for painting, I believe that it has definitely increased my understanding of aesthetics, especially as what I do is traditional Chinese painting. It's quite funny. <laughs> I've led a very Western lifestyle, but in a way, I'm very traditional as well. The art of traditional Chinese painting lies in the colors. All the colors are neutral. The neutral colors, what in English are called subtle. They're colors with tinge of gray. They feel like sand or like sandpaper. They feel a little like a mist blowing in the wind. They're such beautiful colors. They are natural colors. They come from minerals. Mysterious color aesthetic come forth in traditional Chinese painting. In addition, as I use wild horsehair brushes, the tip splits with every stroke. The imprint creates a sense of void. Void and solid. 
dense and concentrated, thin and light. There are so many subtle differences and contradictions that they create a very unique oriental aesthetic. My mother came from a literary family. You can imagine how strict and conservative she was. But in fact, my father was stricter. He was so strict that I feared returning home after midnight. But my mom was always more liberal. She gave me as much freedom as possible. These are my mom's old clothes. Perhaps my grandma gave it to her. She used to wear them from time to time, especially during the Lunar New Year. Oh, she looked very lovely. For her, it was a time. But at that time, all my family had left Taiwan, but I stayed. Not only did I stay, I set up my first studio on Dihua Street. It was an unfamiliar place to me. Then, my mom flew back from New York for the first time since she had moved to the U.S. nine years earlier. At that time, I had my Autumn Winter Collection fashion show. It happened the day after she arrived. So, she came to the show. When the show ended, I saw her sitting among the audience. When I came off the stage, she hugged me and burst into tears. Even now, she's like a child. She just wants to be herself. She only wants to be Isabel Wen. She also believes Taiwan is the best place in the world. The arts and a wonderful life are the most precious inheritance I received from my mom. They are gifts that will keep on giving. Safety helmets are a cultural phenomenon in Taiwan, but Taiwanese like to ride scooters. Since the 1980s, there's been an average of one scooter to every three persons. Scooters make life more convenient and allow us to get around freely. For safety reasons, every rider needs a helmet. Hi there. May I ask why you wear a helmet? It keeps me safe. Any other reason? I'll get a ticket if I don't wear it. Another reason. It keeps my hair tidy when I'm riding through traffic. Take this helmet, for example. We made it light and handy. It is suitable for riding a city. Urban motors need good ventilation because of Taiwan's warm, humid climate. And this one, we call it the Cola Helmet. The chin bar can be flipped up it also comes with a retractable sun visor. We give it Bluetooth functionality so you can listen to music or answer the phone or use the intercom. With the intercom, you can ride out with friends and talk to each other. Of course, the main purpose of wearing helmets is to keep us safe. But from a design point of view, if a helmet is functionally safe, but uncomfortable or unsightly, then it might as well be defective. Not many people are aware that Taiwan is quite accomplished in the research, design, and manufacturing of safety helmets, even in international marketing. I believe that Taiwan's helmet manufacturers have excellent potential for developing their own brands. Helmets are like clothing. You can vary their design to make them look better. Hey, those are cool helmets you have on. Oh, this is my fashion statement. Why did you pick those helmets? Ask her, she's got tons of helmets. It's like tuning shoes. I try to match my outfit. I pick out his helmet too. They are all made in Taiwan. Thanks, bye. 
So, what do you think of their helmet? They look great. No other major brand of flip-up helmet has received snail safety certification. Our products are not worse for having done so. Someone once joked that if we wanted to beautify the world, we should start with the objects we use every day. Can we make these things functional as well as aesthetic? I fell in love with drawing when I was four. I've always been better at visual tasks rather than words and numbers. I love to study objects to see what's inside them and how they work. When I was little, I didn't know what motors, loudspeakers, or power sources were, so I learned by taking things apart. I dismantled alarm clocks, TVs, and our home computer. If it had screws or could be unglued, I would take it apart and reassemble it before my parents came home. At that time, I only did it for the fun of it. But now I realize that I learned a lot about the structure and the components of objects and how things are made. I learned a lot back then. Alice grew up in Taiwan and studied in the UK. Her work is brilliant because, apart from combining beauty and utility, the designs carry an element of surprise and humor. Perhaps this is something Alice learned during her studies in the UK, as the British have a good sense of humor. If you design and convey humor in your product, you can bring happy experiences to many people. This chair is called the Constant Shaker. At first, I was only curious about why people shake their legs and why it's considered a bad habit. After looking into it, I found that our brain actually releases a chemical that gives us the urge to shake constantly. Then, I thought that shaking itself isn't really a bad thing, so why does our society view it negatively? So I decided to make it a positive thing. This meter records the number of calories you burn while you shake your legs. It's a bit like exercising. It gives this negative label a more positive and humorous point of view. In this respect, Alice is comparable to the great designer of the world. Her products can be viewed as art, but they also have a practical use for our life and the environment through her products and the design. She expressed her view on society, gender, tradition, culture, and the customs. One day, I was chatting with a friend, and she told me her house had three floors. Her mom placed a weighing scale on each floor, but only believed in the one on the second floor. When I asked her why, she said it was because her mom weighed one kilo less on that scale. That got me thinking. Why people would buy such precise, high-tech instruments only to disbelieve and to deny what it says. So I designed the scale where people can fool themselves. It's quite long, about 70 centimeters. And the further back you stand, the lighter you weigh. So you can determine for yourself what weight you can accept today. You decide what number you can face. Adjust your position on the scale and you can fool yourself all you want. This is a pair of double-sided headphones. I designed it because we're always standing very close to people on metros or buses. We're afraid others can hear our music and our songs. We're worried that they might laugh at us for our bad taste in music. So I decided to design these double-sided headphones. On the inside, you can listen to any music you like, no matter how old or cheesy. Other people won't hear it because the headphone on the outside will play another song that's more popular and cover whatever you're listening to on the inside.
My dream is to move my office onto a truck one day. When I was young, we had many truck vendors circling in our neighborhood, selling cooked snails or sweet potatoes. When people hear my truck coming, they can ask me to design whatever they want. I can provide designs at a lower price and in a way that brings me closer to people. Every morning, when I rise, I check the plant's color. This tells me whether it's doing well this week or not. I was born in Changhua County in Peito Township's Dahu Village. I grew up on this very spot. My family has long been farmers. This plot has been the inspiration for many of my designs. It nurtured my sense of beauty. In nature, deserves our highest respect. He came from a single parent family, so they had it more difficult than most. One year at the Dragon Ball Festival dinner, I began worrying about how I get by in old age. <laughs> and my daughter said, you will have us. Jim, who was only 11 at the time, said, Mommy is mine. Our poverty meant we did everything ourselves, including preparing food for Luna New Year. I know how to make everything, from rice dumplings to radish cake to Luna New Year cake. I remember when I was young and we were growing vegetables, my mom taught me that when we plot the field, we had to do it thoroughly. She showed me when we sought the field how to hold my thumb and forefinger so that they would spread evenly. She had tips for picking vegetables too, like checking the thickness with your hand. If you put the longer stalks outside and shorter ones inside, the bundle will be beautiful. Also, when making rice dumplings, mom taught me how to layer two bamboo leaves and fold them into a funnel. And how much rice to pull in before adding the filling. Then you fold the leaves and the dumplings finished. It looked like a simple test, but this is how I learned about the beauty of three-dimensional forms. What I learned in the field when I was little is how to perceive aesthetics through life experiences. And this is very important to me as a designer. This elephant slide was my favorite spot when I was little. I like standing up so high because it helped me see farther. Lotuses, their flowers are beautiful and their stalks makes the best material. I fed ducks with this as a child. Duckweed is a great material because it readily conveys beauty. When the wind blows, the duckweed flows to the corner. So what you see here is that half the water is clear, but the other half looks like a monet.
Some of the men in the family were not pleased that a boy was learning flower arrangement, but I didn't pay them any mind. As long as my son liked it and had an interest, he could do whatever he wanted. I've seen many plants and flowers in the fields, so I know firsthand what climates they like. Usually, I will ask a client what time of day his or her event will be. I know when flowers will be half open and when they will be near full bloom. So for any event, I can select flowers that will be at their very best. If you change the way you cut up everyday fruits and vegetables, you can turn them into beautiful decorations. Often we slice baby butt chai in half or cut the heads off. I do it differently. I trim them like flowers. So I discovered this by chance as a child. Someone had cut some baby butt chai and let it rest on the floor. These leavings soaked up rainwater and opened like roses. He was more sensitive to beauty than other people. He had a sharp eye. One time, I told the class how to make a bouquet. Everyone had the same materials. I showed them how to tie it up. Some students still couldn't do it, but he got the hang of it right away. That's okay. I'll fix it. I'll talk to it. Dear Cypress, people will love it if you just stand still. You have to talk to the plants. He arranged bouquets better than I did. He did a great job, but I never told him so. Honestly. <laughs> When I observe plants closely, they inspire my creativity. Every day when I wake up and go into the garden, I fold my hands and talk to the plants. Whenever he prepares for a flower show or an exhibit of some sort, he would mumble softly and speak to the flowers. He'd ask the flowers and plants to do their best and help him put on a good show. Most people would think him odd for doing that. But when a person can have that kind of connection with the flowers and the plants, he's truly living in harmony with nature and grateful for it. I really admire that in a floral designer. Style is not high or lofty. Style is all around us in our lives. Design helps improve the small things in life. The first thing I like to change is our streets. I would change small things like bus stops, phone booths, and roadside benches. These things don't have to be complicated. They can have very simple designs, but still be beautiful and elegant. The essence of fashion is to pursue a beautiful lifestyle. It can be seen anywhere, on a bus, 
or at a street stand. Good morning. Morning. There are no boundaries to design because if you want to be a designer, you can't confine yourself to anything. You can't limit yourself or your work. You have to pour out your soul, and after doing so, you have to transform it into a book, a poem, or a piece of clothing. Design helps us find happiness. Helps us become beautiful. And as we learn and grow, it helps us find ourselves. Actually, are you a dad? Not yet. Well, I have a young son, and I give him a helmet I design. He likes it very much. This shows that the design appeals to all age groups. It also becomes a memory we share with each other. Like when you pick up your girlfriend, you bring a helmet you choose just for her. Just like the first helmet your mom or grandma chose for you when you were little. So, I think a helmet is more than just a product. It signifies the concern of people who love you. No matter if you're in the city or in the country, if you just try to feel the warmth and goodness of this land, you'll soon see that beauty is everywhere. <laughs>